Good afternoon, welcome to um, Executive Magazine's video interview to mark our 40th celebration. Um, we're here and pleased to welcome our the co-founder of Executive, Bob uh, Delgarno. Welcome, Bob. How do you do? So, Bob um, was co-founder of Executive, which first came on the scene in 1982. Um, and it was called Money First Executive back then. Money First Executive, yes. Okay. Um, and we're also joined by our business reporter, Rachel Smart, who <coughs> heads up our editorial for Executive today. And we're also joined by Alison Barron, um, who was on Executive from 2002 to 2008. Um, and if we haven't already been introduced, I'm Daryl uh, Patterson, who heads up the advertising um, for Executive as well today. So, um, Bob, we are delighted to have you here. Um, I'm to delighted to be here. <laughs> to mark such a historic occasion. Um, this video panel is to help celebrate 40 years of executive, um, and we couldn't mark the occasion without you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, back in 1982, it was a big year for Inverness. Uh, we had the completion of Keswick Bridge, MFR Radio started, and of course, executive. Um, so, um, I'm going to hand over to Rachel for a few questions, if you don't mind, um, but we hope you enjoy the video. Thank you. Yeah. So, Bob, I guess our first question for you is what led you to begin Executive in the first place? Well, um, the, the motivation really was to, to be self-employed because we were working in the newspaper industry and decided that... Uh, there was a, a, a space for a business magazine in the north of Scotland. Already published was the business, Scottish Business Insider, but it was very central belt focused, as so many things are. So we thought a good opportunity would be to do something for the north of Scotland. Amazing. And was there any you know, hiccups when you first started out? How did that whole process well, start, you know, well, it wasn't easy because um, we didn't have a great deal of money. We were two guys with young families. Um, so the start of it was um, in, a, in a cupboard in one of our houses. Um, and the advertising department was in a cupboard in another person's house. <laughs> so... <laughs> So uh, they, were, they were like very lowly beginnings, but, but we were really trying hard to produce a professional magazine that would be, a, be good for business to business advertising because there was a lot of consumer advertising available. The Press and Journal, who I'd worked for in the past, the Highland News, who I'd worked for in the past, uh, all had advertising for shops, for retail and so on. But for business to business, there wasn't a great deal. So we saw that as an opportunity. Yeah, and for you, when you ran the executive, you weren't just doing the advertising and sales, though, were you? What was your, your role when you, you started it? I'm afraid that, uh, <laughs> the, well, let's say the budget was low. <laughs> so basically, we were writing it. Um, and my colleague, uh, Adam, was doing the photography. And we would go out together as a joint journalist and photography team, which we weren't qualified in any way to do. But however, we did produce results. And, um, and in between times, we, we spent most of our time selling the advertising space. So yeah, it was, it was a big task, took a lot of time, lots of backup from our families who helped out and, and you know, helped with, with copywriting and so on. But uh, yeah, it was produced by two. Then we were joined by another chap, Steve Povey, who was a friend, and uh, he started to sell advertising space too. Amazing. And did you have any really memorable stories that you worked on? I know you were telling us a few before uh, we started this chat, but you know, when you were doing the executive, was there anything that stands out to you that was a, a really good memory? Do you know, it is 40 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so my memory, uh, Darrell had mentioned the completion of the Keswick Bridge <coughs> and at that time the Goodyear airship was coming up and they were looking for journalists to go up there. So myself and Adam took a flight up and have, I still have photographs to this day of the not quite completed Keswick Bridge. So that was uh, interesting. Um, the oil industry created a lot of interest 
So we had visits to NIG, we had visits to oil companies, many of the small companies that you see around at that time are now big companies here today, so some of the big groups. And, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the business world has changed, but um, we saw many, many of them set up, develop and build from there. Wow, that's amazing. And you know, obviously executive is still is 40 years old this year. What does it mean to you to have left that legacy for that to still exist and still be going out monthly? You know, how did that make you feel? Well, I mean, it's an absolute pleasure to see it. And, and uh, when Daryl got in touch and said 40 years, <laughs> first of all, I had to pinch myself. <laughs> because uh, that did seem like a long time. And, and I'm so pleased to see the magazine is is so well produced nowadays. It really, it, it really looks much more professional than it did in our time. Um, I mean, we were at the stage where, but because we were salespeople, we sold everything. So you, you could have your photograph on the first cover of the executive magazine uh, if you paid money, <laughs> which probably makes a journalist shiver <laughs> at the thought of it. But that, that was the time we were in. So many of the initial covers you would see um, uh, local businesses, uh, launches of new cars, we would take cars out to places like Calder Castle and beauty spots and, and do photographs there. Um, and that, that was a form of advertising for them basically. So yeah, it was. It, it's really good to see it still going, still prospering, and uh, and of course I read it every month. Absolutely. That's great to know. We've got a loyal reader still. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here. Yeah. <laughs>